Good Saturday morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for Racine and me. I'm Jessica Ty. Today we're shining the spotlight on the United Way of Racine County. It's an organization known for its ongoing efforts to improve our community. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll talk about the United Way's upcoming Day of Caring and the Schools of Hope program. Two great ways United Way is helping Racine County. And joining us in the studio this morning is Rodney Prunty, the president of the United Way of Racine County, and Allie Haig, the resource development manager. Thank you both for coming in today. Thank you. Hey, thanks for having us. Let's first talk about the Day of Caring because this is a first for your group. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we wanted to look at a way that we can engage the community in a different way. You know, typically when we kick off our campaign, we just do the campaign kickoff. But we sure. thought this would be a better way to engage the community around volunteer opportunities. And what exactly, for people who don't know, because a number of communities do do this, but basically it's pretty much a one-day effort to get people out in the community volunteering? Yes. Correct. How many organizations and how many nonprofits are involved in this? Well, we have over 21 site locations. Every organization that participates is an organization that is located in Racine County and serves Racine County residents. And that's really important to you, mm -hmm. isn't it? Very important. To get people out in our community. What kinds of projects will people be helping with? Well, we have anything from um, installing a born learning trail in Burlington to putting information packets together for NAMI. So uh, we have a wide array. There's a large amount of outdoor activities, and then there's also indoor um, cleanup, painting, different things. So. Since this is the first time that you guys have done the Day of Caring, how did you get the word out there that if you have a project, you're a nonprofit, and you need help, we can help you? It was, uh, there was a lot of reaching out to the community. Um, we worked through our local uh, volunteer center of Racine County. We had it in the newspaper. We posted it on our website. We put it out through Facebook. Pretty much any way that we could possibly reach out to the organizations that we work with and any nonprofit throughout the Racine County can participate. It is coming up on Saturday, September 7th. It all starts at 8 a.m. Who can volunteer? Is it anybody out there, people of all ages? Absolutely. Anybody can volunteer. You know, um, that's what it's all about when we look at uh, helping to support the community, is to bring the community together in a way that really helps everyone. So that's, this is a great opportunity for anybody. You talk about helping everyone. Obviously, this benefits the nonprofits. What do you think the volunteers get out of it? I think they get to see the other side. They get to see the work. They get to become familiar with that particular nonprofit and, and the work that they do. And it's just a different way for them to engage. You know, a lot of these volunteers are donors, but they don't get the opportunity to really see the work that's being done on the ground. So it's a way to bring them closer. That's so true. And those donations, maybe you're doing it at work. Your your organization mm -hmm. or your, your place of employment says, let's donate to this or maybe even donate to United Way. This mm -hmm. is a way to see your dollars at work. Correct. Absolutely. What is it like for you guys to volunteer as well? I know you see everybody volunteering, but for you personally, what is that like? You can go first. Okay. Um, well, I love to volunteer. I volunteer with my family, and my mother-in-law is one that actually got us started volunteering. But for us, it's nice because... Um, we're walking the walk, we're not just talking the talk. So when we come and we ask people to participate in our community and take stake, we're doing it as well. So when I volunteer, it's an opportunity for me to become closer with the organizations that not only United Way works with, but has an impact on our community. And it's also a way for me to teach my children how we can give back. So I, I love volunteering. So. Yeah, and, I, and just to kind of, you know, piggyback off of what uh, Allie had to say, I mean, that's what it's all about. When you think about Live United and what it really means, it means that everybody has a, a role to play when it helps improving the community. And one way is to do that through volunteering. And for me personally, uh, you know, the volunteer efforts that I've uh, been involved with over the years have definitely been rewarding for me, particularly mm -hmm. when you're talking about working with kids and yeah. all that. Yeah, mm -hmm. just puts a smile on your face to know that you're helping and, and helping at such a young age. So hopefully they want to help out and volunteer yep. too. You mentioned Live United. That's the motto these days and we can see that on the pictures here on the t-shirts. <laughs> These are actually pictures from a different community in the Quad Cities that has already done the Day of Caring. So I wanted to show just an example of some of the things that are being done. You guys will have pictures as well because this is the first time that you're participating in the yes. Day of Caring. Did you talk with other communities about the successes they've seen? Is, is that part of why you wanted to do this? Well, it's kind of interesting because, you know, I'm new to this United Way. I've been here since August 1st, and the United Way where I came from uh, in Rockford, Illinois, had done this kind of Day of Caring kickoff for the past three years, and really, I, I just thought that it was a wonderful way to, for this United Way here, the United Way of Racine County, to, to kick off the campaign because it's so it's so engaging. It really brings people together, and uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's um, you know, in just about every yeah. case, it's a success. Yeah, without a doubt. I can't imagine it not being a success, just <laughs> right. getting out there and helping. 
Do you hope to make this an annual event? I know it's the first time this year for, for our area, for the Racine County United Way, but do you hope to make it an annual event? Definitely, yeah, yeah. We've had a great response so far. We have over 300 volunteer slots and oh. we have um, about 216 filled. So we hope that going forward we'll be able to build on that, have more organizations participate and larger groups volunteer. Is there still time for people to participate as far as volunteering? Definitely. definitely. Wonderful. What do they need to do? They can visit our website at www.unitedwayracine.org. Um, just click on Day of Caring and there are individual registration forms or group registration forms. Okay, wonderful. And let's go ahead and give you the basics here in case you're, you're watching and thinking, I would love to help out. The Day of Caring in Racine County is coming up on Saturday, September 7th. Starting at 8 a.m., there's registration and a breakfast as well. At 8.30, it's the 2013 campaign campaign kickoff <laughs> and at 9 30 a.m. the volunteers begin and of course that's across a variety of different locations but as far as the registration breakfast and the campaign kickoff that's all happening at Real Racine formerly known as the Convention and Visitors Bureau that's located in Washington Avenue in Sturdivant Wisconsin. Up next on Racine to be another great effort from United Way Schools of Hope how it's changing the lives of our little ones. On the next Big Bang Theory, Sheldon's new intern is a big fan. I think you're just brilliant. And that is the prevailing opinion. And then she goes fanatical. Battlestar Galactica comes on tonight. I guess I can wait for the DVD. Yeah. And then never, ever watch it. Can Sheldon break free? Ramona finally dozed off, and I need you to help me get rid of her. Excuse me? Hide me. Hide you? I formally request sanctuary. Next Big Bang. Tonight at 6 on WNLW. Listen up, America! The price of life insurance has gone down 60% over the last 15 years. Many Americans know they need it, and some that have life insurance know they don't have enough. How would your family get by without you? How are you planning for the uncertainties of life? Guarantee your family $200,000, $400,000, $750,000 or more with a term life insurance policy that costs up to three times less than other competitors. For example, a healthy 40-year-old man can get a $250,000 term life insurance policy for $16 a month. Don't spend more than you have to on term life insurance. Find out how easy it is to protect the ones you love. The quote is free and there are no obligations. Listen up, America. Call now. Call 800-508-6121. That's 800-508-6121. Welcome back, everyone. United Way of Racine County has another great initiative. It's actually relatively new. It's a Schools of Hope program. It provides young children with tutors on a regular basis to increase reading achievement. And joining us in the studio this morning to highlight this initiative, the Schools of Hope, is Jessica safransky Schott, Education Specialist for the United Way, and Amy Aguilar. Uh, you're a volunteer, so thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us. I know. You are so passionate about this, because when we were talking, she emailed me this idea, and uh, you said, I'm so excited, can you tell? So it's so nice to know how passionate you are about this. How did Schools of Hope, how did this initiative get started with United Way? Well, everything that we do at United Way is volunteer driven, and so in 2011, we had a, um, an investment committee called Caring for Kids that set aside some dollars to be invested in early childhood education. And so based on that directive that we got from our volunteers, we started doing our research about the best way to invest our donor dollars in that area. And we landed on this program called Schools of Hope. Um, we liked it because it was started in Dane County, um, so we liked that it had a Wisconsin tie, sure. and it's a proven model. Um, and it utilizes volunteers to help students become more successful. And when you say it's a proven model, mm -hmm. how so? Um, through Dane County's use of test scores, they were able to show that the involvement of volunteers in their schools helped kids make measurable gains in reading. And although we're only uh, have just completed our pilot year, we're seeing the same thing from the test scores for our students. And you've actually seen a lot of growth because you started with two schools. Tell mm -hmm. me about the, the progress so far. We started last fall at two schools. We um, had a goal of 60 tutors for that first semester and ended up with 80 um, and then expanded to two additional schools in the spring and ended up placing 168 tutors with 257 students. Wow, that's impressive. And Amy, how did you decide, this is something I want to be a part of, I want to help out. 
Yeah, so I had heard Jessica talk a couple of times before I officially um, became involved in it, but I think just the, st the statistics of one in three children are not at reading at grade level by third grade for me was shocking. Um, and I have a little one at home, and so I thought if I had a little one that was struggling to read, I would want them yeah. to get all the resources that they could um, in order to get where they needed to be in, to be successful. Um, so it's just a way that I can give back to the community in a small way. You know, we do tutoring teams where I work because we can't always get away every single week, but it works out well um, for us. Speaking of working, you have a full-time job. Mm -hmm. So what is the time commitment like for you? Um, so we did teams of three last year. This year we're talking about doing teams of two. Okay. So it was just a one-hour time commitment, um, which our company is and you know, once gracious. A week? Once a week. Once a week. Yep, uh, to allow us to go, and we just work our lunch around that time whenever the children need to be tutored um, and so we had a team of three so it was every three weeks we would go you know this next year it'll be every two weeks um, just to try to make a better connection with the children on a more frequent basis that is wonderful do you typically see companies and businesses employers who are saying we want our employees to do this and, and we're actually going to give them the time to do it we are the business community and racing has really embraced schools of hope and um, Employers have been great about allowing their employees to flex their time or um, work around their lunch hour, like Amy said, um, because the future of the kids is super important. Um, obviously, we want students to be able to read, um, but it's also the future workforce for these businesses. So by helping the kids get a strong foundation early on, um, they will continue on through school and, and graduate ready to take the jobs at these places in our community. I love this picture. Isn't that the best? <laughs> He's the one of children our saying thank you and mm -hmm. how appreciative they are of this. Is it true that more than 50% of the volunteers have full-time jobs, something like 64%? Yeah, yeah, a very high percentage of our, our volunteers are working adults. Um, we do offer that option of the tutor teams, um, like Amy took advantage of at her company, um, to allow people to have a little more flexibility. We also have many working adults who um, take on the role of going every single week. It really just depends what works best for people's schedules. So for people out there saying, I have a full-time job, but that's a time commitment, I can do, I would like to do this. What kind of experience do they need? You don't need any experience to be a volunteer. Um, we start with an informational session and explain the program to people and then um, once they pass a background check we provide all the training that that the volunteers need so that they can be successful. That's wonderful. Take us through a study session, will you, when you actually sit down with the kids. What happens? Yeah, so you, you just go into the school, to the classroom, and the teachers are very aware of when you're coming, and they call the student's name, and they come out, they get their little books, and, you know, we usually sit in the hallway or the library, um, and we spend a few minutes talking, maybe about their weekend or what they're learning in class. You know, sometimes you realize you're interrupting something really interesting that <laughs> they don't necessarily want to leave, so we always give them a minute or two to kind of decompress. Um, and then we spend the majority of time having them read to us. And when they get stuck on words, letting them try to work through it. Um, and when they can't, you know, helping them learn what they need to do. Sometimes it's hard. It's not just sounding things out. Like words like gnome and nymph are not easy sure. words for, for kids to get because there's rules behind that that they need to learn. Um, and we also spend time reading to them. You know, a lot of times they enjoy being read to. Um, and I I've had times where they just want you to read to them and that's okay because them hearing it spoken to them is just as important. So. That is so wonderful. So is this something that you want to continue to do as a volunteer for many more years Yeah, absolutely. I'm really excited about this year doing the whole school year, hopefully with the same child, I think would be really great. Um, and the teams that I tutored with last year are looking forward to coming back as well. That is so great. And mm -hmm. Jessica, you have a big smile on your face hearing that, don't you? <laughs> I do. I mean, this is a testament, hearing from mm -hmm. the volunteers and then hearing from the kids as well. Do you get a chance to, to chit chat with the kids and hear how they're doing? I do. Um, I sometimes feel like a minor celebrity when I go into the school. The kids kind of recognize <laughs> me as the the tutor lady yeah. and I actually have kids um, have come up to me and say are you that tutor lady can I get one of those I need one of those that would be really great um, but then getting to talk to the students working with their tutors and find out what they're working on that day and, and how excited they are to have their tutor come is really awesome that's great I love that story and this is really a partnership between mm -hmm. a number of groups the yep. United Way the businesses involved mm -hmm. in the schools too yes when you went to the schools with this idea did they say yes we're on board 
Yeah, the, the key factor in selecting the schools that we bring to the program to is really the excitement of the staff um, and teachers that want to welcome volunteers into their classrooms and say, yes, we definitely want to give our kids just one more opportunity to be successful. So. And are you always looking for more volunteers? We are always looking for more volunteers. Um, we have a goal of 300 volunteers for this fall. So. All right, so you heard it. This is a great idea. So if you have that time commitment and it's not much, an hour away week mm -hmm. you can certainly help so get in touch with United Way. Thank you so much to both of you and don't go far because up next on Racine to me a teacher talks about the impact Schools of Hope has had in her classroom. It's a comedy so big. Come on Phil hurry up. It can no longer be contained. We're gonna be so late. To just one night. Modern Family is busting out nightly. Um that sounds awesome. Starting September 23rd at 630 on WMLW. If you've been thinking about financial options for your retirement future and how to provide some real security for you and your family, you really ought to consider a reverse mortgage with AAG. It's a safe, effective financial tool that's already being used by hundreds of thousands of other Americans. It allows you to eliminate monthly mortgage payments, have the money to pay some bills, or simply enjoy your retirement more. A government-insured reverse mortgage with AAG allows seniors to stay in their home and turn their equity into tax-free cash. To qualify, there are no credit score requirements. And the best part? You continue to retain complete ownership of your home. Call 1-800-286-6815 now to receive your free info pack, including DVD, brochure, and an extra booklet featuring real reverse mortgage borrowers. That's 1-800-286-6815. Find out more. Call AAG today. Call 1-800-286-6815 now to receive your free DVD and brochure with absolutely no obligation. AAG, the best advice for a better life. Welcome back, everyone. Krista Brooks, a teacher at Fred Elementary, is joining our discussion. And I really wanted to bring on a teacher because you have seen firsthand the impact that schools of hope can have. What have you witnessed and experienced in your classroom? Um, we try to pick the kids that need the most help getting the extra chance to read. Um, and just their confidence as they start to to read one-on-one -on -one with a teacher, read one-on-one -on -one with a volunteer, see people who are interested in the community coming in, showing them reading is important everywhere. Um, these kids just, their confidence, their willingness to read, they just come out of their shell. It's, it's really good to see them want to read, yeah. want to pick books that are more interesting and excuse me, challenging and, and want to kind of show off to their readers when they come in. It's always, oh, is it my day to have a reader? They get excited about it. Mm -hmm. That's the best. Is it is it difficult or is it fairly easy as a teacher to go through and, and to kind of be able to see who needs more help with reading? Um, it's kind of easy to see the ones that can read want more, that you need, the ones you want to get more practice sure. because you know it's in there. They're just not willing to do it enough. Um, we want the ones that you know are going to start blossoming as soon as they get the more extra the help they need. I've got 30 kids in my room, so being able to sit down and read with each one yeah. is very difficult. And I teach with a partner, so there are times when we can both sit down with a kid while the other one is teaching and then read with them and do extra help. But if there's 30 kids, you can't do that with every single kid every single week. The community coming in and just reading with these kids and giving them that extra practice. Someone else besides mom reading with them, dad reading with them, someone else besides the teacher, right. it's just is so much more positive for, for them to do that. And it's interesting, I'm wondering Jessica, when you guys thought of this, of course you're thinking about the kids, which mm -hmm. is the, the ideal goal here, but mm -hmm. did you ever think about the teachers as well and just giving the teachers a helping hand? Yeah, I actually have a background in education, so I really appreciate how hard our teachers work. And one of the my favorite parts about the program is having volunteers come into schools and really Realize just how great the teachers are, how hard they work, um, how wonderful the students are, and how when you go into a building, um, although it's a lot of hustle and bustle and stuff going on, there's learning happening 
literally in every nook and cranny um, and that the teachers can always use a little extra help and working with teachers like Krista have just been it's been amazing because they've welcomed us into their classrooms and we've really been able to help them. It's wonderful. And you can tell from these pictures how much fun the kids are having with this too. I mean, they just have big smiles on their faces, a, a little gleam in their eye as well. You mentioned um, when members of the community come in, sometimes do certain members of the community maybe identify and, and help a little bit more with some of the kids? Um, well, if we have certain volunteers like we had um, volunteers from the lacrosse team from Carthage College mm -hmm. come in we try to pair them up with the kids that are going to do it's going to do the most impact like we had very sports interested boys who really could care less about reading mm -hmm. once they saw the sports players were sure. all into reading then even after they had to return to their home state since many of them were from California or Missouri I think one was mm -hmm. These kids were still all interested in reading. That's the best. And these days, is it getting easier? Is it still tough to get kids just to enjoy reading for enjoyment? Because sometimes when we think about reading, and then you're growing up maybe, and maybe reading is tough. Some people think it's just straight to the books, and, and it's, it's about enjoyment too if you have the time. Yeah, it, I would say it's getting more difficult to get kids to want to read for fun with so many computer yeah. and, and little apps out there getting kids to realize that if you can't read the app and know what door is doing it's not going to work that's so true there's so much out there and how important is it to get to the kids early and make sure that they are proficient in reading because i would imagine if you don't get them early it gets tougher and tougher um once you get past the grade i teach which is second you start getting into a lot of the state tests, a lot of the federal mandates, a lot of fast moving curriculum. Um, and if they don't have that base of reading from kindergarten to second, it becomes a lot more difficult for them to catch up to the rest of their class, to stay even or even feel like they're the same as the rest of their class. And how are the parents responding to this? You send out letters to let parents know mm -hmm. that this is mm -hmm. out there. How are they responding? Oh, the parents love to see how their kids um, just started to blossom with this. They, the parents love what the, the kids have another person coming in to read with them. Oftentimes the kids will talk about their readers to their parents. The parents say, okay, we heard about, did we get a chance to meet them? Yeah. Oh. They would love that, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. as, as a parent, you'd love to know that there's many more people helping yeah. and not just the teachers because we know how busy you can be. Do you plan to do this uh, for many more years? Do you hope that this is something that stays within the school district? Oh, I really hope so. As I would love to have as many volunteers as possible in my personal classroom <laughs> uh, to help with the kids. We love having people come in from the community. It just shows the kids that everybody thinks your education is important mm -hmm. you need to think your education is important because that's what really matters and it is so important what is do you have any future goals for schools of hope when it comes to uh, this united way initiative well we'll be at eight schools this fall so we've doubled the number of schools since last year and we do have that goal of at least 300 tutors this fall um, beyond that i really think our potential for growth is only limited by the number of volunteers that we can get so the more volunteers that sign up and and, and stay on as tutors, the more students that we can work with. Wonderful. Well, congrats on this successful program because it sounds like it's doing wonders in the Racine area. Mm -hmm. And don't go far. More ways for you to help the United Way when we come back. We've got stars you'll know by name and films you'll know by heart. We are movies. You can find movies on Charter Cable Channel 976 and on Over the Air Channel 49.3. Jeopardy! Weekdays at 8.30 on WMLW. Attention dialysis patients. The FDA has issued a Class 1 recall of GranuFlow and natural light dialysis products used at Fresenius Clinics and other dialysis clinics. These products used during dialysis can cause heart attacks or sudden cardiac death. If you or someone you know suffered a heart attack or sudden cardiac death during or after dialysis, you may be entitled to a cash award. Call the Sentinel Group at the number below for a free and confidential consultation. If you or someone you know suffered a heart attack or sudden cardiac death during or after dialysis, do not delay. There are time limitations to file a claim. There is no obligation. If we don't get you a cash award, you pay nothing. 
Call the Sentinel Group now. Call 800-686-6030. That's 800-686-6030. For a free consultation, call 800-686-6030. Call now. Do you have an idea for Racine and Me? I would love to hear it. You can send me an email at jty at cbs58.com. You can also connect with me on Twitter and Facebook. Today we've highlighted two incredible efforts by the United Way of Racine County, the Day of Caring and Schools of Hope. But there's even more that United Way does. And, and in fact, I have the website pulled up here. It's, it's pretty incredible, just the number of events and, and things that you guys are involved in. This is a great resource, isn't it, for people to go to to check out the other ways that they can help. Correct. Definitely. We try to keep our, our website really updated. There's always information about upcoming events, um, programs and initiatives that we are running. So it's a great resource to people for people to learn about what we do. And right here on the front page, I see the 2013 campaign kickoff and Day of Caring. We mentioned uh, that you still are open to volunteers, so people can go ahead and click right here mm -hmm. and uh, sign up as well. Yep. And then what about Schools of Hope? Can they become a tutor by... Any more information here? So when you come to the page, if you just click on that Schools of Hope um, logo, it will take you to all of the information about Schools of Hope. And there's a link that says Become a Tutor. And then from there, um, it gives you the information that you need to sign up. And you guys really want to build relationships Definitely. within the community. How important is that? And is that truly your focus here? That's integral to our success within the community. Um, for us to build lasting relationships with not only the companies that we work with, but the individuals that work there. Because they are our community. They're what's going to change us in the future so um, that is a huge portion of what we're doing and anybody that's interested in what we doing what we're doing our work the programs that we have the events we have it's all listed on the website so another great resource too you guys have a Facebook page that I'm gonna go ahead and pull up for you mm -hmm. right here and uh, this is a good one I've already liked it in fact there you can see the president <laughs> of the United Way right there during our first segment we had him on but there are a number of events that you guys put on here too in fact coming up on Sunday there's you can get a haircut yep. and benefit the United mm -hmm. Way so yep. something maybe a little bit smaller but everything yep. helps doesn't yeah. it yeah yep. yep and we use our Facebook to kind of share information about all, all sorts of things that are happening around mm -hmm. the county that are related to United Way and our work so it's a great place to kind of get quick bursts of information and, and find things to get involved with mm -hmm. you guys also talk about your own team and, and some of the things that you guys are doing what are some yeah. of the recent things that you have been involved in yeah well I think there is a, a picture we had uh, we have a, a group called youth as resources and that's a picture from a team building um, event that we had just this week um, to help our board members get ready for the new year so um, yeah wonderful so much and in united way you can tell just from this half hour show and, and we can't even begin to touch upon all of the amazing things that united way is doing but um two great initiatives right here with schools of hope and the day of caring thank you so much for coming in and i just wanted to leave you with this this is something i saw on the facebook page about united way barb wrote united way of racine county is that value added ingredient that makes Racine a great place to live and work that has to make you proud it does Thank we you guys so much. And thank you for joining us. Join us next week for Racine and Me. Friday news feed, a brand new cure for cancer that